I knew him at a uh, karaoke bar uh, once, and, and I, I just went, hey, we're best friends. <laughs> and he was like, what? And I go, I'm Shikamaro. And he's like, oh, dude, you know, I, it's so funny. And, uh, you know, so it's like you, you have this relationship, but you don't have this relationship, partly because you never are in the booth together. And uh, I just think it's, 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 inter it's interesting. And I'm, I'm sort of one of these people, like I said, I do follow the show to a certain extent. I, can't, I know what's going on. I don't watch it every week. I, you know, I have to say, like, when I'm not in an episode, I'm fast forwarding. <laughs> okay, I get it. What's going on? All right, there we go. <laughs> I know. It's a little egotistical, but... Uh, and then I definitely watch my stuff to see how they edit it and which take they chose and then, uh, you know, how it plays with the music and the whole, everything put together. And it's amazing sometimes because I think, like, boy, I had a bad session or, really? You're going to go with that take? You know? And then you see it done and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess it works. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a good crew. A good team. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I always wanted to do voice acting. Uh, I, you know, I'm an actor. I've done comedy. I've done, you know, I've done a lot of improv, a lot of uh, uh, just regular shows. I worked at like the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis. I did. Uh, I worked for the Disney Cruise Line doing improv, uh, and I've done film and television. You know, a little bit of everything. Uh, not a lot of anything, but <laughs> a little bit of everything. And I always thought I'd be good at it. And I always, you know, growing up like. Most kids, you know, watched Saturday morning cartoons and thought, boy, that's the job to have. Wouldn't that be fun? And uh, I had this friend of mine uh, that was friends with Jeff Nimoy. You guys know who Jeff Nimoy is? He's a producer and actor. And I'd see him at parties, you know, friends in common, and, and he'd say, oh, yeah, I'm working on Digimon, you know. So, and, and I'd be like, hey, hey, if you ever need new people, I'd love to try out for that. Or, you know, I, I think that'd be something I'd good. I got high voice. It's and different, and he's like, have you ever done it before? Like, no. <laughs> he goes, well, I can't use you because you don't have any experience. And I'm like, well, how does one get experience if you don't do it, you know? Uh, and so anyway, that was his, I, every time I saw him, though, I kept bugging him. I'd say, hey, Jeff, can you have any chance you could just bring me in for a one-liner or let me try it? He's like, no, oh, dude, I, you know, it's hard to bring new people in, and I always hate breaking them in and stuff like that. Anyway, they had they were doing Digimon the movie, and this was like 2000, I think, something like that. And uh, he was bringing in a couple of my friends that knew Jeff. So I call him up, and I go, they don't have ADR experience, and you're bringing them in. So can you get me in? And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, all right, you can come in. You know. So I came in, and I read for producers. And uh, they liked me. They liked me a lot. They actually wanted to make me one of the lead characters in the Digimon movie. And then the question came up, have you ever done ADR before? <laughs> and, you know, actors, there are some actors in this world that they say, have you ever ridden a horse? And they'll go, yes, absolutely, to get the job. But then they'll get fired because they don't know how to ride a horse. Uh, sometimes it, it works the other way where you, you actually benefits you. But I'm not a liar kind of a person. I don't, you know, I go, well, no, but I'm sure I could learn. And, you know, if you take time. So they were they were hesitant to put me in the movie, but what they did out of that was they put me in a couple of Digimon episodes with just a couple of lines just to try me out. And so I did that, and everything went okay. And then they had uh, Shinzo came up. They were having auditions, so I went in and I did that. And they wanted me for the lead character in Shinzo, but they were nervous about the fact that I'd never done a series and I hadn't done ADR work before. And this is back in the day where you had to make it fit, right? There was no Pro Tools. They can't slide around. They can't waste around, waste a lot of time doing uh, 50 takes on one line. And uh, so they said, you're in for the first three episodes. If it doesn't work out, we're going to cast somebody else. So talk about pressure. And, you know, about episode five, I go, I guess I'm staying, right? Because nobody actually officially said, you're in, you're the guy. And so we ended up doing 30, I think 35 episodes of that show. It was one of those shows where it was beginning, middle, and end, the whole deal, 30 episodes or whatever. And that was it. And then from there, I just got this job or that job. And just little, well, it's like people you work with. Like if you have a director, that, that director of Shinzo was a guy by the name of Michael Sorich. Now he calls me in for different stuff all the time. And that's what it is. Like, you become friends, and then if they like working with you, then they'll bring you. Like, Jeff Nimoy, it was funny. He got me into the business, has never worked with me since. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in, and I go, Jeff, how come, you know, now I see him, like, at conventions. I see him in the, in the office or at the studio. And I'll go, hey, how come you never bring, and he's like, well, you know, I, 
I'm not in his little circle of the people he likes. Well, he's got such great people, you know, and he just uses them over and over and over again. So, yeah, you have questions for me. What was the favorite person you've ever voiced? Unless it's Shikamaru. I, th I like Shikamaru a lot. I think uh, it's great, and also because I've done the longest. You know, it's been four four years now, something like that, and uh, and that's great. You know, uh, Ruji was a lot of fun uh, for Zoids, which has not hit yet. So when it comes on, you'll see what I'm talking about. Because uh, he's such a sweet character. He's very much like a Naruto kind of a character. He gets a little hot headed, but he's very sweet, and he you know he kind of grows throughout the series, and. Uh, and it was that was fun to be the kind of the Naruto character, the lead, you know, the the, the guy, uh, if it ever gets on television. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I guess they're holding it up because, uh, you know, the toy line. Because Zoids was a show that was done in the '80s, and they had a toy line that went with it. And then they've reincarnated it several times. And so, this is the latest version, and I think they're going to try and do a toy launch with it at the same time. And it's sort of continuing the story where it had left off, I guess, 95 was the last one they did, something like that. And so it starts with us discovering a Zoid in our lagoon in our little village. So we pull it up and then, what's this? It's a Zoid. And then that kicks us off to this whole thing. Yeah. So. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, what do you like to do for fun? What do I like to do for fun? Um, I bike ride a lot. Uh, I'm a cyclist. Uh, I gotta get doing that more because I've gained a little weight recently. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, really, the acting thing is kind of your hobby too. Like I do a lot of improv comedy in Los Angeles. Or again, I've done it a little bit, but uh, and I do a lot of like, live theater and shows. And that be, kind of comes your whole sort of life, just sort of eking out little things. Because it's it's great when you have a job that you also like to do. It also becomes like your your hobby as well, so it's fun. I'm also, uh, one thing I'm trying to do is develop my own series. Um, I work with this director uh, on Zoids, his name is Rene Villeneuve, and we got to sit around talking one day because it was like, you know, why don't we develop our own thing and try and do it that way? And I don't, you know, we're pretty long, far along in the process, but uh, we'll see if it ever turns into anything. I don't hold my breath, but it's, uh, it's a space show. It's called Squad 121, the Atom Project, and it's uh, it's Earth like um, 2340 or something like that. And there's this war against this alien race, and it's it's a lot like Naruto in that there's a squad of kids, and they're kind of trying to figure out life, and they're very they don't necessarily get along, and they have this uh, huge you know enemy out there that they're trying to. Uh, to fight against. Actually, I can show you the cover of our little, if you're interested. Oh, yeah. This is our little presentation. This is what it, so it's a little bit more than me just saying that we're doing a project. <laughs> you know. And I, I wrote it, and they, uh, uh, I probably shouldn't be showing you artwork, but this is, this is our, this is our head guy. His name is Major Matt Warren. And uh, he's a good guy. He's a war hero. He got uh, wounded. Most of his limbs and stuff got blown off and then replaced with this blue gel oh, of cool. mysterious origin. They don't know why. <laughs> it bonds with your DNA, and so if your brain thinks you have a hand, you have a hand. So that's kind of how it works. That's pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool yeah. to me. I love, I love guy animation. So that so, sounds really cool. So it's really interesting, and uh, we've been you know, trying to develop it. We finished the Bible, and so it's kind of one of those try and take the bull by the horns kind of thing and try and do our own thing. Uh, and it is a little different. I mean, doing original animation is it's a whole different thing. And uh, we actually might start with like doing foreign investment. Like we've got a, a guy in Australia because to get it done in the United States, like you couldn't do a show like Naruto in the United States. Because if you look at the shows in the United States, there's shows like the Teen Titans and Batman. Batman's pretty dark, but you look at like Teen Titans and they're fighting and it's like. Nobody really gets hurt, and it's all kind of tongue in cheek, and because you know they got hang-ups about violence, which obviously we should, because you got to be responsible about it. But on the other hand, there's no threat that anybody's ever going to get hurt. Like Naruto, people are dying on that show. People are getting you know really seriously hurt and injured, and it's very real the drama, and and so that's what we're kind.